Welcome to a Schoolbots workshop. My name is Liam Noonan and we are looking at how to build a Schoolbot robot. What is Schoolbots? Schoolbots is a game where the objective is to actually build a robot and use that robot to destroy the other robots. Hence, build the best, destroy the rest is the way we like to describe the game. The robot you must build must have several different abilities. How do you build a robot? You build a robot using software. The software can be Java, which is free. You download that, and that can be downloaded from schoolbots.ie. And Robocode software, which can also be downloaded from the Get Started page on schoolbots.ie. Make sure you have an administrator account if necessary to install the software. In 2007, Our Ladies Bower at Loan won the first competition. And in 2008, Cashel Community High School won the competition. 2009 is yet to be decided. What makes a good robot? A good robot will have at least the following abilities. Detection of enemies and acquisition of targets in a short period of time. Rapid reaction to being hit and appropriate avoidance and attack strategies. And agile mobility around the battle arena. Your robot consists of three things. A vehicle, a gun and a radar. Each can be turned independently of each other. The body or the vehicle carries the gun with the radar on top. The body is used for moving the robot ahead and back as well as turning left and right. The gun is mounted on the body and is used for firing energy bullets. The gun can turn faster than the vehicle and can turn left or right using commands such as turn gun left and turn gun right. The radar mounted on the gun is used to scan for other robots when moved. The radar can turn left or right and if detects an enemy will generate an on-scan robot event. Radar is by far the fastest piece of equipment to turn. The robot vehicle, the gun and the radar can all rotate independently. At any moment in time, the robot's vehicle, the gun and radar can be turned in different directions. By default, these items are all facing the same direction. However, you must remember that the tank or the vehicle moves very, pretty slow, the gun turret moves faster and the radar fastest of all. When establishing where you face and what direction your your tank or gun is heading, you use coordinate geometry. 0, 90, 180, 270, all the way back to 0. This helps you establish which direction your tank is facing. So if, for example, your tank was facing in a south direction, you would say that the heading was 180. If it was facing north, you would, it would be 0. 90 would be east and 270 would be west. The battlefield is 800 by 800 for school bots, which means that you have room to move 800 units in either direction. Movement is expressed in pixels, so the command ahead 100 means move your robot ahead 100 units. The command back 100 means move your robot back 100 units. As seen earlier, movement is based on the coordinate geometry system, north, south, east and west. So 0 for north, 180 is south, east is 90, west is 270. Bearing is different to heading because bearing refers to where is the wall or enemy relative to you. In this example, if the enemy was to the right hand side of you at 90 degrees, we would say it, the enemy is plus 90 degrees. If the enemy was to the left hand side and 90 degrees away from you, we would say the enemy is minus 90 degrees. You use bearing when trying to figure out where the enemy is and is often used then in conjunction with where you're facing and where your gun is facing so you can turn your gun towards the enemy and destroy them. An angle relative to the bearing the enemy is most commonly used in targeting and will represent the offset from the enemy. By using the bearing you can easily turn towards something else such as turn right event dot get bearing. This means turn towards the right hand side and attack your enemy which is a pretty common strategy. Turn right or turn gun right uses event dot get bearing. In other words, get me the bearing of the enemy that you have detected. You must remember, however, that bearing is from minus 80, minus 180, to plus 180. Robots know when they've hit a wall, been hit by a bullet, or been hit by another bullet. These sensors use what we call methods, or pieces of code, to notify a robot that something has happened. You then have the choice to actually tell your robot what to do when these events have happened. Your robot, for example, will know when it's seen another robot. We call that unscanned robot. And these scan events are arguably the most important of all events. 
and they allow you to do some pretty powerful features with your robot. So for example, if you have a robot, and your robot, in this example, is called Radar, So we go down to where the Robocode software is, Robocode, Robots, Schoolbots, Radar. This robot, for example, has what we will call a scan method. And in the scan method here, highlighted, it is very simple. It turns towards the enemy and fires a bullet and a strong bullet. Some robots put 90% of their code in the on-scan method. The only way you can generate a scan is to move your radar and detect the enemy. If an enemy robot wanders in front of your radar, it will generate a scan event, but you should really take a more proactive stance. Scanning is the fastest way to detect your enemy, and some robots keep their gun and radar aligned together, which means facing the same direction. This means that once you see the enemy, the gun is facing at the enemy. However, this means you're turning your radar at the same speed as the gun, which can be slow. Other robots turn the radar independently of the gun, because the radar can turn twice as fast as the gun, and then when they see the enemy, they have to turn the gun to face the same way as the radar, and then fire. When you fire something, you will actually fire something that's based on a strength of a bullet, which can go from 0 0.1 to 3, but most people use strengths of 1, 2, or 3. A bullet of strength... 3 would travel at a velocity of 20 minus 3 times the power, which is 3. So a bullet of strength 3 would travel at a speed of 11. While a bullet of strength 1 would be 20 minus 3 times 1, which is 17. So weak bullets travel fast, strong bullets travel slow. However, strong bullets cause a lot of damage. You lose energy every time you hit a wall or you get hit, a, or you get hit by a bullet. A bullet of strength 3 will cause damage of 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 2 times 3 minus 1, which is 4, which is a total of 16 points of damage. A bullet of strength 2 would cause a damage of 10 points, and a bullet of strength 1 will cause 4 points of damage. If you hit somebody with a bullet of strength 1, you would get times 3 times the bullet power energy, so you get back 3 points. If you hit somebody with a bullet of strength 2, you get back 6 points. If you hit somebody with a bullet of strength 3, you get back 9 points. When your energy reaches 0, you are disabled, and you are unable to fire. If, however, at the moment you came disabled, you fired a bullet and it hit somebody else, you will get some power back. So, when do you fire? Well, there are several things to consider. Is my gun aimed? If your gun hasn't finished turning before you fired and your targeting algorithm is being crippled, how much energy do I have left? Firing yourself disabled is usually not a very clever or worth it strategy. Am I able to hit the enemies accurately enough to make it worth firing at them? And finally, when you look at this, the scoring, what you can see here in this example is the bullet damage with the survival, survival bonuses and ram damage and bullet bonuses all add up to give you a total score here on the left-hand column. The total amount, total score decides the winner. So, it's important to build a robot that can move around the screen, but that can also survive being damaged. This concludes the first lesson on school bots.